Okay, let's take a look at the wastegate control of the Cyvex range of ECUs. This ECU is an S6 Plus ECU linked to an R35 GTR kit. And so the base map is already predefined to have the wastegate solenoid connected. If we scroll down and go to IO configuration pin assignments, here at the bottom under output wastegate control 1, you can see it's already assigned to the corresponding output. Okay? If it's not and you've got a kit which doesn't have a wastegate solenoid fitted on the car from factory, then what you can do is in here you can assign to the output that you've basically wired the solenoid to and then from there device program the ECU by clicking here and then that will flash that and set the wastegate control to that pin. Then what you've got is basically under the wastegate control section here, you've got control valves where you can set the PWM frequency of the solenoid. Okay, and then you can also set a battery adder if you wanted to, if you know the scale of the uh, the shape of the solenoid versus battery. Then you've got your phase linearization. The phase linearization is basically how the output of the solenoid is affected based on the wastegate duty. So the output linearization on this is just 0 to 100. So what you'd have is you'd find that as your wastegate duty is 100%, the actual solenoid is driven 100%. If you want to flip it so that you control it in the adverse way, you can then obviously do so by going math flip x. And it will basically change the output linearization scale. Then you've got the antiphase output linearization. What this basically means is if you had a wastegate and you've got a solenoid connected to the top side of the wastegate and then a solenoid connected to the bottom, you can assign one to the phase output linearization and one to the antiphase. And then what you can do is set a linearization that basically matches the control flow that you want based on wastegate duty. You can also then set a compensation for if it's going to be bleeding on or bleeding off on the wastegate. Once you've done that, let's go over the control side of things. So the enable basically means the wastegate control strategy becomes enabled when the throttle position is bigger than 20% and the engine speed is larger than uh, 2,500 RPM and the barometric pressure offset is more than zero. From there, you can change your brake points to suit the control. Uh, these are blue items, so you will need to program the ECU after changing these. Then you've got your target tables. So there's four target limit tables, and these allow you to set the target in which the closed loop wants to achieve. There's four of them so that you can predefine uh, set targets for different modes, but generally speaking, it's best to just do your target for your, say if you've got a flex fuel sensor, if you've got zero fuel composition, then set your target for that based on the zero, and then for the 100% fuel composition, set your target limit to two. Then what it will do is it will blend between the two based on your FNL content. And this is explained under Flex Fuel if you press F1 in this section. Okay. So when you then do that, what you've got is your target limit. Say you wanted to have a target limit of one bar. Then if you're in different modes, in different cow positions, as you can see here, the cow position changing down here. If you're then wanting to have it so that basically you have different manifold pressure targets to suit that, you'd actually do that under calibration switches, boost control, and then what you can do is you can change your target limit based on your gear position and your cow select position. So you can see when I change the cow, it moves over to there, and then hence from there you can actually drop the target down so that you can have different uh, boost targets per uh, cow switch. You can obviously change your target limit table here, and you can also change your duty based on your, uh, like a base duty overall trim if you wanted to, based on cow and gear, as well as a throttle uh, progression. So when you've done that, you basically then, um, I've got two comp maps here which I've created for basically drop the boost if there's a knock retard events uh, happening, or if there's a high low timer, and I can explain how those are set up a bit more after. You've then got your manifold pressure target progression. Uh, this is based on uh, your gear and again your uh, throttle position. So basically what that would do is it would drop the target. So say at the moment if you're at 87% throttle or above then it 100% uses that target you've set. If you're at 50% it halves the target based on your throttle position. The base wastegate control duty table. Um, this is basically looking at your target. So your target on your left axis and then the RPM on the right. And this is a base duty to like a base position of what the wastegate duty needs to be to help the closed loop having to work so hard. 
So the next area to look at is the closed loop manifold pressure control. So this is an enable option to have it enabled or disabled. You can change the breakpoints to suit this table below. And basically what you've got is a manifold pressure PD control table. So this is the first part of the PID control. So basically what you have is your y-axis is the MAP1 DT. So this is the derivative in which the rate of the manifold pressure is climbing. So if the manifold pressure is climbing rapidly, basically what you can do is you'll see that the values will then be positive and you can back out the duty to uh, slow the turbo speed down. You then got wastegate map error, which basically is your target for your wastegate target versus your manifold pressure to create a variable, and then what you then can change is your duty based on that. So um, you can see currently it's sat at zero because the wastegate control is not active currently. Then you've got your closed loop pressure, uh, closed loop post restrictor pressure control. If you have a sensor after the uh, restrictor on a rally car, it's good to be able to monitor the post restrictor pressure. And then from that, what you can do is control the turbo uh, duty uh, to basically maintain not too much uh, restrictor pressure because it can damage the turbo. Then what you've got is turbo speed control, much better way of maximizing the turbo uh, in, uh, over the restricted pressure control. This way you can look at the data from the turbo manufacturer and basically find your turbo limit and then set that based on uh, the stage area if it's a rally car or even if it's a race car to suit where the turbo limit is. And then from that you can enable the control and basically uh, adjust the PD control duty to suit. What that then does is you look at your turbo speed error and adjust it to, um, to, to suit the, uh, the control target. The closed loop integrator, the integrator is based on an enable PD duty. So if the PD duty is less than 25%, um, then the integrator will be enabled. And if the uh, manifold derivative is uh, less than 1,000 millibar, then again, it will be active. And what it does then is it uses the PD uh, duty uh, that you've, you've basically been applied and it acts as uh, an integrator on top of it. So as your integrate, if your PD duty is, is quite large, then basically what it will do is the integrator will actually work on top to integrate the duty uh, extra on top. So it basically helps to bring the control uh, back to a zero position. So the integrator will wind up, bring the PD duty label down, and then uh, hopefully then maintain the boost uh, better. Uh, the, the integrator is really for when you have large errors and it just helps. It's like a long-term trim in order to get the control closer. You can then set your minimum and maximum and a decay. So after the um, after say you lift off, the integrator will then unwind to uh, to suit. So let's get an idea of what the uh, wastegate uh, spring pressure is on this car. So let's set the wastegate duty all to zero and then I'll set our target right down at like half a bar. And then uh, we'll just do a run and see what it, where we are. So we've done the run. Let's pull the log off the ECU now. Using S data, we can delete the sessions that are on there now because we've uh, we've already got them. And then go file, load latest data in S view, and in here we can actually plot the run. So let's uh, let's close all this down. We don't need to look at everything on here. So we can look at our wastegate target, and then our manifold pressure. And then open up another gauge to have here wastegate duty, final duty. So we can see here it is trying to apply duty here to maintain uh, the target which I set of uh, 0.5 but this is basically our wastegate spring pressure now you can see the turbo does creep ever so slightly up basically the, uh, the hole of the wastegate uh, is probably not large enough and it can't vent off enough of the turbine energy but that's not going to affect anything we need to do for the minute so what we're going to do now is uh, we're actually going to go and actually set a target now of 2 
1,201.2 bar, not change the base duty, and then have a look to see what the uh, the PD duty does to suit and the integrator, so we can go over it afterwards to explain how that works. So you can see the wastegate map target now has gone to 1.2. Okay, so let's pull the log off and uh, see what's going on. Okay, so now we basically can see that the um, the target has gone up. It's now 1.2 bar. And you can see the turbo, has, the boost has come up slightly because the wastegate duty is uh, increased here. So what you can actually see is the, the PD control is basically bumped up and, uh, and allowed the wastegate duty to kick in a bit more. But what we need to do now is increase the base to stop the turbo working so hard. And then um, what you can see if we go down to here, look at the, the wastegate PD duty. DT, you can see here where it's quite large, it's following what the wastegate duty is doing. And then what it would do on that is it would apply the integrator. You can see here the integrator, as the PD duty is obviously uh, risen, the uh, integrator slowly is stepping up to try and add wastegate duty on top to basically bring the control better. And you can actually see it starts to do that in the shape of the integrator versus the wastegate pressure control. You can see as it bumps it up it starts to uh, bring the, the boost into control more. So what we can do now is look at our wastegate final duty here, like it's up in the 35s uh, and it's still not reaching the target so it's a good place, a good value to go in there. So go to SCAL, base control duties, base wastegate duty 1 and then in here what we're going to do is pop in here a wastegate duty of 40%. So we know that 35 wasn't enough, it wasn't able to reach it. We're going to put in there 40% and then uh, and then see what effect that has. Okay, so that looked much better looking at the manifold pressure of the uh, SCAL monitoring items. There's more my scale duty. Okay, so now basically you can see that the wastegate control, uh, the, the manifold pressure has actually come up onto target. So the target of uh, 2,200, the manifold pressure has come up, and you can see the closed loop is actually working to maintain that. Now you can see that the, the, the manifold pressure is slightly going up and down, and this actually has a four-port solenoid on it, so it is quite s sensitive to, uh, to changes of wastegate duty. So what we're going to have to probably do is actually go in and back off our... Um, uh, wastegate PD table based on the error. And then what you can look at is what I was saying about the map 1 DT. This is basically, you can see as the turbo is accelerating coming up onto the boost, you can see the map 1 DT value there is positive and again you can use the table to suit that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go now, we're going to go to our PD duty and in the small error areas we can see where the error here, if we bring up a uh, another gauge, gauge add and then CA wastegate map one error. You can see here in the smaller error areas that it's causing and the the the, the map one DG changes. It's causing the turbo to basically change the the duty quite a lot down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come basically to this area around here, 150 error, and we're actually going to multiply it by 0.7. So we're going to take out 70% of the uh, we're going to dumb it down by 30%, sorry. So we can just give it another run and see what effect that has.
It's actually in a slightly higher gear, but it's not not a problem. No. Okay, so I'm going to put here 0.7 on PD table. And then instantly you can see the manifold pressure now is far more stable. It's hardly moving at all. And you can see that the wastegate duty has been dumbed down as a result. So it works quite nice. And then obviously you can change the target to suit. Um, but these are the key things you want to be looking for. Set up your S-Config to get these variables added. Map1, Map1DT, the integrator, PD duty. And from there you can uh, yeah, get it to suit. You can see this slightly overshoots the target here as it comes on to boost. This is in the areas of where the uh, the Map1 DT is high. A couple of things you could do to help that. You can see that in order to maintain the, the perfect uh, manifold pressure, our wastegate duty is in the region of about 35, 30, 37. So our base duty value that I popped in here now for that, uh, that boost target here, 40, it's probably a little bit too high, so you can drop it down 35 and then what you can do is you can set this then for basically based on your target so in the end your base duty table should look a bit more uh, like this now if the values on the left axis are not high enough for the boost you want to achieve you can just go into the manifold pressure breakpoints area here say stick that to a lot higher boost interpolate that between the two so I'll just do that again press undo so you can see how I did it put the 4500 in there select the whole table and then go math interpolate X and it blends it between it and then after that what you need to do is program the ECU to save those changes hopefully this has been a good insight into the wastegate control